He slips into a dream in which he assumes he's in reality. He is carrying out his everyday activities as a mailman. He is walking across the bridge on the way to the first house on his delivery route. He slips on a patch of ice.
she has died, but in no way is his dream over. Simultaneously, the first man has been dreaming of his death. He slips on a patch of ice. She has died, but in no way is his dream over. The first man has been dreaming of his death. The two quickly find themselves isolated together in a small, faintly lit room. Run, but you can't hide. Uh, are you dead or are you alive? Yeah. In this dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness. Dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness. No matter where you go, where you are, you are. But you don't have to go far when you are lingering between the dimension of darkness. Dimension of darkness 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 Darkness, dimension of darkness. Can we 
against a wall, but dimension of like darkness. All this place is just a room wall. Dimension of darkness. Well, the two quickly find themselves isolated together in a small, faintly lit room. The two quickly find themselves isolated together in a small, faintly lit room. How did I get here? Hello? 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 Somebody here? Somebody? Yeah. Hello? No. It's gotta be wet. Yeah.
Estimate the power of free will. They say the truth is stranger than fiction, but I've seen a lot of fiction that's definitely a lot weirder than reality. I, I guess I'm, I guess that's we established that, I guess, because I, all I remember was falling. That must imply that we're so. If we remember right, if we remember right, both of us are. We're in the we're in the life-threatening situation right before we got here. Yes, and probably... Yes, and probably we're both dead. I mean... I mean, that's the only conclusion we can draw from this. I mean... Before I was at the bank, I just remember being at my job. And... conclusion we can draw from this. I mean, I really don't remember... I mean, I'm trying to think back as much as I can. I can't really get anything. Well, well, me too. I was just going through my everyday activities. I mean, I'm, I'm a mailman. I, I deliver mail, and I was just on my way to this like, lady, this sweet old lady, really. And she lives just across from a bridge. And, you know, I was just walking along because my car, you know, I... Yeah. Stop. So you live in the city of Los Angeles? She lives across this, like, kind of river thing, and, you know, it's it's kind of high up the bridge. It, yeah. It, and I, I don't like to, I don't, I've always been afraid of the thing. I don't like to drive my car over it, so I park, and I just... Yeah. She always likes to remain. I, she likes chit chat, so I just walk up. She's a lonely old lady, so I just walk up and, you know, yeah. just hand her the mail, talk to her. But but this time, you know, before I got there, I slipped. So you never, pretty, you never made it to her? No, I didn't, but it's a pretty far, uh, far, I mean, a long way down. Obviously, if you slipped, yeah. obviously, if you slipped, you died. Well, yeah, I come, well, yeah, I come to think of it, the more I think about that river. More. I think that that was pretty high up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm hanging there if I just broken something. Again, I helped a lot of pain. Yeah, instead we're here. 
December here, and I don't feel any pain. I can't feel any bullet wounds or anything. I, same with me. I don't think there's any point in circling like this. I think that we both know that each other is in the same situation. I guess. Well. Got to be a reason for that. Well, I mean, can you? I can't. Well, I don't know. We, I mean, there's got to be a reason for this. Well, I mean, we can you? I can't see the ceiling. Um, yeah, me neither. Um. Well, I don't even. We haven't even walked to the middle of the room. There may be a pit or something below us or something. Yeah, I'm just hugging the wall. I, have, I haven't taken my hands off the wall. Well, I'm gonna. Wait, no, just crawl with it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to feel my way. Come around. Yeah, I'm gonna try to feel my way. I can kind of tell where you are by your voice. I think I'm coming up right on you. Can you hear me getting closer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. I stuck here. I stuck. Yeah. Uh, I stuck. I'm trying to see if there's ground everywhere. I'm coming down. Some 
supernatural world or something. Maybe we just it got stuck somewhere. That's something. what I'm. That's what I'm saying. You know, maybe maybe that's the only explanation I could offer. Yeah. Nothing there. We're just these. It's a slightly controversial thought. Do you ever wonder why Jesus thought dying would help us? And I never asked Jesus to die for me. If anything, I'd want him to live for us in humanity. I wouldn't want anyone to die for me, you know? Uh, if we're in the purgatory or something. And why wouldn't Jesus be expected to live for us instead of dying for us? There's too many rules to follow here. Excessively, it seems somewhat hypocritical, organized religion. I mean, and don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Jesus. Your God is you know, a great source of moral integrity. It's be good to your neighbor as you'd expect them to do to you, but how do you turn the other deep when they're trying to make you suffer, you know? It's, at what point do you draw the line for self-defense? It's well, at least a lot of unanswered questions. It's basically the ultimate guilt trip, you know? It's like basing your life on the Bible. It's like living your life by the script from a famous movie without knowing the real-life characters that are uh, the movie is based on in the first place. You know, I, didn't, I don't want anyone to die for me. Never, I never asked anyone to suffer for me. I wouldn't ask anyone of that guilt trip to that magnitude. So, you know, if anything, we'd want Jesus to live for humanity. I don't see that if that's such a big thing and such a bad thing to expect instead. Does it depend on a level of violence or can we all control our emotions and our existence to the, you know, is that a crime if we can't? It's God's gift of free will to question things. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, you know, maybe, maybe that's the only explanation I could offer. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing there. Yeah. We're just, these seem to be in just the most boring room. Yeah. If we just happen to be in a room, I would have liked to have a room with, you know, a little more depth than this, but just four walls on each side and a ceiling at the same height. Yeah. Looks like my apartment. Well, well, is your apartment very small? Yeah. It couldn't be this. Oh, there's got to be a way out of this dimension of darkness. Damn. There's nothing above us, just the ceiling. Don't be such a pessimist. There's got to be a way out around here somewhere. Wait, look. Over there. There's light coming from that divot in the ceiling. You sense it? Yeah. Oh. oh, I see you're hunched over in the corner there. 
fills the room. Jimmy's mind begins to wander. He thinks about his situation. Nothing comes to mind. He wonders why he's in a dark, four-sided area with a person called Neil. He wonders what the significance of Neil is and why Neil is with him in this totally isolated room. He draws the conclusion that they were put here for a reason. He is suspicious of Neil. Jimmy thinks Neil wants him to he is in the same situation as Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't really accept the fact that they were two people who died and were thrown into a room together. Jimmy believes the key to getting out is to Neil. You can run, but 
but you can't hide. Dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness. Dimension of darkness, dimension of darkness.